welcome to part two of this training about algebra tiles. In this part, we're going to talk about factoring. So hopefully you are able to watch part one and think about some different ways to use algebra tiles to show your students how to multiply. And now we're going to undo the multiplication when we factor. And so it's really important that students first understand how to use the tiles to build the dimensions and then fill in the area. Because when we factor, it's like we're given the area and we have to figure out the dimensions. I really think using this manipulative, using algebra tiles builds almost this intuition when working with polynomials and when working with how to factor them and break them apart and think about how all the pieces work together in the expressions. So we'll go through some different things. We'll try some different things out. Again, if you have algebra tiles, I recommend having them with you and playing with them and seeing what you come up with, thinking about what your students will think about. And um, you can use real ones if you have them. You could use paper ones or digital ones. Any of those are great options to work through these problems. All right, so let's take a look at some things. So when we first talk about factoring, I think it's important to go over the vocabulary. Students need to know what does it mean when we say factor. If we give them a number like 14 and we ask them to come up with the factors, then hopefully they can come up with these factor pairs like 7 and 2 or 1 and 14. Now here, 1 and 14, we want to, you know, maybe point out that, yeah, those are factors, but that doesn't really help us break apart the number 14. And that's the goal today. The goal is to break apart these expressions. So we're looking for factors that help us do that. Okay, if a rectangular area is 14 square units, what are the dimensions? Now, you can use your algebra tiles and play with this and try to make a rectangle. All right, so we can see here we made a rectangle, and now if we find the dimensions, we can see that there's 7 and 2. That's the idea we're going to use when we try to factor polynomials. We're just trying to make a rectangle. That's really not an intimidating idea. I think factoring polynomials can be very intimidating to students when they're in Algebra 1. But if we start with something like these tiles and say, hey, I'm just going to give you some, and I want you to make a rectangle. That seems like something everyone can approach, everyone can try to figure out. It's almost like a puzzle. It's even kind of fun, if you ask me, but um, I think students will get into it too. All right, so let's start out with uh, looking at the value shown here again, kind of like we did in the first part. So we have 2x plus 6. If that's our product, what are the factors? So if that's our area, can we find the dimensions? Now this rectangle is set up for us, so we can kind of see the format here, and we can try to figure out what these uh, two dimensions are going on. So here we see across the, across the top we have x plus 3, and then along the side we have 2. You can see those are our two factors here. All right, let's try to factor a trinomial. So first we'll look at this and try to determine the value. I see I've got my big x squared now, so we have 2x squared plus 5x plus 3, and now we're just trying to figure out the dimensions. And there we can see, we can line up our algebra tiles to see that they would give us that area. Two factors are 2x plus 3 and x plus 1. All right, so, so far that probably wasn't too tricky because I already had the rectangle set up for you. Now, here's where I think it gets a little more fun, but a little more challenging, and getting into can you really factor? Can I just give you the expression and can you figure out how to arrange it to make a rectangle? So let's try some of those. So with this expression, you wanna gather the right algebra tiles to represent it, represent this value, x squared plus five x plus six. And instead of thinking of any, um, any standard algorithms or any shortcuts you may know to factor this, don't go there. Just try to make a rectangle. I'll give you a second, but again, like we did in the first video, if you need to pause, feel free to pause if you're working with the tiles. All right, so here's our rectangular arrangement. You may have tried different ways to put those X tiles, but this is the only way that's going to give us a true rectangle. And then we can figure out the factors. X plus 3 and X plus 2. 
And um, you may, it's important to note, you may have switched the orientation. You may have had your factors swapped and that's perfectly fine. With factors here, it doesn't matter. The order doesn't matter. All right, try this one. Gather these algebra tiles and go ahead and try to make your rectangle and see if you can factor it. Pause it if you're gonna do that by hand. All right, here's our arrangement. And then we can see what factors we need along the top and the side. So we have our two factors, x plus six and x plus one. All right, let's try a little bit trickier problem. Gather these tiles for two x squared plus five x plus two and see if you can make a rectangle. I'll go ahead and show it. And then we can see our dimensions, which are our factors. X plus one, oh, excuse me, two X plus one and X plus two. Okay, let's move along to even um, a more challenging problem. And I, I like to jump to this because uh, back when I used to teach this to students without algebra tiles, back when I used to try to tell them all the procedures I would never have dreamed of giving my Algebra 1 students this problem probably ever in the year, let alone day one of factoring. But once they learn how to use the Algebra tiles, you can challenge them with a problem like this and they might surprise you. So go ahead and gather these tiles for 6x squared plus 11x plus 4. And all you're trying to do is make a rectangle. Okay, I encourage you to pause here and try it out. And then when you're ready, hit go. All right, I'm gonna show the arrangement. Is that what you got? You might've turned your sideways, that's fine. Now you can determine the factors along the top and the side. So we have three X plus four and two X plus one. So with the algebra tiles, it's almost like a game, but look, this is kind of a difficult problem, especially for algebra one students, especially if they're just learning it. But when they're looking at it in this, um, this way of just thinking about area, they can figure it out. They really can. All right, let's throw in some negatives here. So go ahead and grab this x squared minus five x plus six. Go ahead and try to figure this one out, just making your rectangles and going from there. All right, here's the arrangement. And then we can determine the factors. X minus three and X minus two. So there we have to be careful with what we use for our factors. We have to think about what times what will give us this negative here and this positive here. Um, and that's important for students to think through how that's gonna all work together. All right, let's try this one. X squared minus two X minus three. Grab those, and when you're ready, you hit play again. You might wanna pause me here. Okay, so let me show you what you might be, uh-oh, it's not working, maybe you're stuck. Maybe you can't quite get this, here's a little hint. You can add extra X tiles and negative X tiles as long as the value doesn't change. So think back to part one when we showed different ways of representing three X some of those ways included some extra negatives. So as long as you have a negative and a positive, if you want to put those into your rectangle, you aren't changing your overall value. So watch what happens. So I added a zero pair. I added a positive X and a negative X. If you look here, the value is still X squared minus two X minus three but now I have my complete rectangle and now I can factor it. X minus three and X plus one. All right, try this one out. Two X squared minus X minus three. I'll go ahead and show it. Okay, so again, we had to add some of those zero pairs in there, some of those positive X's and negative X's to get the rectangle to work, but we did not change the value. And now we can factor. 2X minus three and X plus one. All right, let's try this one. This is always a fun one to show students. 
Okay, so in this case, we had to get three positive x's and three negative x's to make this work. And then you may see where we're going with this. This is what we know as um, the difference of squares. It's a pattern that students will probably pick up on after they do it a few times, but here they get to see it. They get to see how it all works. And I want to address that common concern that comes up that if I use algebra tiles, my students will be stuck using them or how will they ever learn the standard algorithm? But that's, that's not what we're trying to do. We're not trying to pick either or. The algebra tiles help them build that understanding. They help them to think about the meaning and what's going on. Why am I looking for, um, you know, why am I multiplying these numbers? Why am I doing all these procedures that get me the answer? The algebra tiles help the students to think through that. So I do like to go over that with students. Once they've worked with the tiles, I want them to stop and reflect, what have you seen? What are the patterns you're picking up on that will help us to be more efficient as we move on? So if we look here and we ask them, can they find the re these relationships? Can they find what's going on between a product and the factors when we're working with polynomials? So take this as example here. Can you come up with the factors without using algebra tiles? That's what we want them to do eventually. So letting them pause and reflect, I think they'll come up with these procedures on their own. All right, let's watch one method a student might use. Okay, so we're gonna connect this to that area model, the written area model, the box method. This time we're filling in the area. We know we have x squared and six, but we're not sure how to split up that five x. So here we're gonna pause and kind of see what's going on so far. We're filling in the area, we're doing that box method backwards. So I know x times x will give me that x squared. That's why I can fill those in in green for the factors. But now I've gotta think about what times what is going to give me that six. But I also have to think about that I have five X that needs to be split among the other two boxes. So letting students kind of grapple with that, kind of think about what am I gonna place here and here, they'll start figuring out that quick shortcut procedure that sometimes we wanna jump and tell them quickly. They will come up with those on their own. And if they come up with it themselves, it's going to stick a lot better. It's gonna make more sense to them. All right, so we'll see how this student continues. So they decided to use a three and a two. And we can think about here, okay, a three and a two multiply to give me six. And then I can also do the three times x to get three x. X times two gives me two x. And together two x and three x in blue there gives me that five x I was looking for for the middle term. Okay. And let's see here. And we can see how it relates to the algebra tiles. It relates so well. All the pieces are kind of set up in the same spot so we can see how they all connect. Okay, if you've never tried using the box or the area model to factor, try it out now. If you wanna use your algebra tiles to help you think, that's fine. But see if you can go on to the box and start filling in pieces. Okay, remember this is the area that we know. We know the area. So let's go ahead and fill in our x squared and our 12. I know that x and x, that's what's gonna multiply to get me x squared. So I can go ahead and place those for my factors. And so now this is a little trickier there because 12 has lots of factors, you know? Should I use three and four, two and six, one and 12? That's something for students to think about. How do I know which pair of numbers is going to work out to give me the area I need. Okay, so I've chosen two and six. And when I finish filling in the area, I can see how that two X and six X are going to add up to the eight X that I need. Let students think about that. Let them discuss it and talk about why that works. And then we have our factors, x plus two and x plus six. Let's try another one. Go ahead and pause if you wanna give this one a shot. All right, so I go ahead and fill in my x squared and my 48. Those are the ones I know are gonna go there. 
and then I'm going to use 4x and 12x. Again, I had to think about what two numbers are going to multiply to give me that 48 and add to give me 16. Okay, let's try this one that has negatives involved. We go ahead and place our x squared and our negative 12 or our minus 12. So now I'm thinking about factors that will give me that negative 12. I decide to use 2 and negative 6 because that's what's going to add together to give me that negative 4 or minus 4x for that middle term. Then we can see our factors are x plus 2 and x minus 6. Hope you found that useful for factoring. I think factoring is kind of fun when you use algebra tiles. If you want more practice problems, you know, just go to a book or a worksheet or whatever you may have. And if you haven't used algebra tiles before, I encourage you to just play with them a little bit. Try some more out because you will have these aha moments that will help you show your students how to use them and help you to think of good problems to ask and how you can transition them into using the standard algorithm and more efficient methods as they move on.